Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me. Today, we have everybody's favorite guest, our favorite guest, mm-hmm. the guest that I am so confident would be on the podcast. I definitely forgot to ask her for two weeks. <laughs> Aislinn Paul. Hi. Yeah. Gosh, it's so validating every time I come here and you guys are like everyone's favorite guest. And I'm like, do go on. Well, we've been over this where someone has been asking, which I know you're watching, has been asking if you can host the podcast. <laughs> and like, I was like, and you responded to the comment. Like, well, no, he's had Aislinn on as a guest. Like, no, 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 I just mean like replace Megan and yeah. have her host instead. <laughs> yeah. I'm no. like, I'm, I'm no. sure our sponsors too far. would be like what is happening yeah. here you do all the ad reads everything <laughs> it would be i don't know how i'd pay it, you yeah and it would also be like almost the exact same thing except for just with ad reads yeah. would be the difference yeah. Yeah. yeah no it would pretty much be the same also yeah. if i was megan and then megan wasn't here the dynamic would be totally off i'm way less funny when then, megan's like, not around would i not I be know. your guest like yeah. would you yeah. Yeah. i would, would just you have just- you <laughs> the guest. You would just say, hey, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. You have to memorize the phone number. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I have not done that. And I, it took yeah, me a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited you're here. This is going to be this is going to be so great and good and easy. Moss asked me this morning. He was like, um, who's on? And I was like, hey, so he's like, oh, <laughs> and then like he was like, he's like, who like who are you meeting today? And I was mm. like, hashtag no new friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now you've um, you had a tie with Leo yeah. as the most. And we didn't tell you, yeah, but you were in competition. But then we got you back on real quick, so you kept your title. Yeah, oh, okay, good. <laughs> if Leo stole that title from me, I would. <laughs> no, no, no. It was tied. It was tied. It was tied. But it was you were. Yeah, we didn't want you to. I knew you would want it. Was it. Only, <laughs> well, by the time this comes out, it'll be like a month and a half after. But oh, wow, as far as like recording, it's only a couple weeks. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was pretty excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I think it's I think it's valid that you guys would be my most yeah get, like my sense. number one guests you know the male version of me the better version of me whoa you're the better version no 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 yeah. no, no way nicer no, no. way nicer uh uh-uh. uh huh I no mm-hmm. I didn't drink enough milk as a kid to be the better version of you I need to be way taller <laughs> I, neither did I them <laughs> I drank a ton of milk and I I mean we're the same height I know it was <laughs> such a lie they told us such lies as kids the it food was pyramid it was a scam the, it was a scam and it was a scam mm-hmm. by the dairy by industry dairy, mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I know I remember even when I was in kindergarten this is such a random story but when I was in kindergarten I hated milk from like my youth and they would only feed us cheese and crackers and milk and I was like don't want it but they obviously are going to force a four-year-old to eat food they're not going to care what Mm -hmm. you care about so that was the first lie I ever told was that I told them that I was lactose intolerant Mm -hmm. and then they gave me water like yeah which is so much or like the idea that I never said it's like milk or juice Mm, and mm-hmm. it was like so either if you are lactose intolerant you're gonna be like a seven-year-old with diarrhea <laughs> or you're, we're just gonna spike your blood sugar right, and then yeah. you're gonna crash yeah. right um okay guys well welcome to the podcast i've already welcomed you but consider this your second welcome um this is an advice podcast if you're new here welcome all aboard auga <laughs> choo choo um, oh god <laughs> Uh, wait, what was, wait, not, not to, uh, oh, I used to do this in high school. My friend said like, not to toot my own horn, but auga. <laughs> not toot toot. No, auga is just a little more like forceful. I see. Like, auga. Mm. Also, I think there's a cartoon where that was like yeah. well, that's, a fog horn on something. Yeah, but that, that's when the, the eyes pop out. So, oh. oh, yeah, 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 that's, yeah. Yeah, that's when the eyes Robert? pop out and it's, uh. No, who Bible? is it? Um, Popeye? Popeye? Like when he sees all of them? Uh-uh. No. It is the howling wolf. Wow, we've just we've completely aged ourselves. Everybody's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. The Fairly Odd Parents is a vintage show. I love Fairly Odd Parents. Black and white. So, yeah. Odd Parents. Fairly odd. Okay, can we get copyright? We can probably still get copyright. <laughs> um, okay, guys. Well, anyway, uh, this is a call-in podcast. So um, even though it's very not clear at this point that it's a call-in, <laughs> there will be calls. There will be calls. I fucking promise. <laughs> it's, it's coming. But before that, I have to tell you the number. Um, the number is three one zero six nine four zero nine seven six, and there you guys can just leave us voicemails and ask us uh, questions, and we'll get you some advice. And then our international callers, like Canadians, a a a. Hey, hey, shout out to Aislinn. She's Canadian. <laughs> um, uh, you can send us an audio message at meganpodcast at gmail.com. So, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Shall we get it started? Hot. Let's get it started in here. I am 24 years old. and I am calling because I need some professional advice. Um, 
I am currently working at a job. I've been working here for three years now. I absolutely love it. I love working with animals, and this job is mainly focused on working with animals and education, and I really love that. But it's not exactly in the field that I want my career to go in, and it is also, I'm living in my hometown, and I really hate my hometown, and I'm really looking to move out west. Um, and there's a lot more opportunities with the career that I want out west. So I, my dream is to move out there. Um, and so I, my husband and I are planning to move out there in about six to nine months. That is our plan right now. Um, the only problem is is that the job that I work at right now is really small. The only other full-time position that works there is my boss, who I get along with super well. But she definitely needs me to keep the uh, business up and running. Um, and I love her and I love working with her, but this is just not what I want. And I am really just ready for a change. And so I just need some advice on how I am going to be able to quit this job in a way that, you know, I don't, I don't want to give her too much notice. Because, you know, if it doesn't work out, if I need to stay for another year or so, I don't want to end up jobless while we're still in my hometown. So um, I just want to know, like, when's the appropriate time to bring that up, when I should, you know, let her know that I, should I wait to let her know until I get another job out west? I want to give her as much notice as possible because I don't want her, like, drowning in the amount of work that she has to do, but I also don't want to lose my job. Uh, too quickly. So um, if you have any advice, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Bye. This is both tough and also not because in many ways your mind is made up and you know what you want. So it's not even about grappling with how, like what you're going to do next. You you have this plan and you know what you want. It's just about you not wanting to put your uh, boss in a bad spot and also hopefully not have any issues for yourself down the line. I think I think what you were saying about maybe looking into other work out west and having that plan a bit more finalized before you bring up notice is a good idea. I also am not clear on how much uh, training and uh, speciality you have to have in this area for the job that you currently have. Um, but, but depending on that, if it's going to be really hard for your boss to find someone to replace you, um, more notice is nice. Uh, but if it's the kind of thing where like, somebody who is either in college or university or something could then take on that job and um, they don't really need prior uh, experience in the area or something. I don't think you need to worry as much. Um, and I get, you know, you really care about your boss and that's awesome. It clearly she's made a really good work environment for you. Um, and, but I think don't worry too much about uh, what positions she's going to be in because you have to think about your life first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I fully agree with that. I think my exact thoughts were um, you should have your other job totally set up because as much as like you really respect your boss and I'm sure your boss respects you, like you are right in the sense that like you're put, not putting her in a bad spot. Like it's kind of an inevitable spot that she's going to be put in eventually. Like mm. I think anyone who doesn't like anyone who works, but like when you have, when you're an employer and people work below you, like you have to know at a certain point, like those people aren't going to be around forever. Um, but, uh, yeah, you don't want to put yourself in a position where if the other jobs don't necessarily pan out in the time that you want them to, that you're in like a hostile work environment or mm -hmm. there's like resentment mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I would say just in general, I am a big believer in like <laughs> setting up those like safety nets and like having something that you're going to be going towards. And especially because the other jobs that you want to apply for and where it involves you moving. So there has to be a level of like a specific amount of time in general. Like it's not that you're going to like get a job and start immediately and start the next day. Like yeah. it's going to require a move. So you're a future employer, like that's going to be a conversation. So I think when you talk to employers in telling them like, yes, this would, I am located here, but like, I am interested in a position that would involve me moving. Like I would just need like what, however much notice there is. And then I would also figure out exactly what the notice is legally that you need to give your boss in your field. Which would be two weeks. Two weeks. Usually for it's most usually, jobs. usually, but 
there's really no legal like oh, okay. you can le- up and leave just whenever like nice. you want it's just a yeah a, a nice a nice thing a to nice do. thing to do yeah. um and i would also say i think like if it requires at least like i know from like my boyfriend changing jobs it's a lot of like even when he like left a job and got into a new job it was a like there's that transition phase where if you have to train somebody and mm. if you're able to like once you have your other job set up and you're able to then um, do outreach and like help your boss find your replacement. And so that I think like for a peace of mind could help you feel um, when you're obviously still working at that place, like help you feel a little bit less like you're like abandoning her in a bad spot is that you have like all of the training that you have had. You can then like impart that knowledge on to or at least like start to impart that knowledge on to whoever's going to take over your position. Um, and it's also not your responsibility to be like so worried about her yeah. but mm-hmm. i think you like like you said like i think you've got such a great mindset because you're not grappling with it like your mind is already made up and like the decision is made up so i just think like best way to go about it is secure another job and as, as soon as you secure that other job and not like a oh like a soft offer like anything like that like as mm. soon as it's secured you have like put your notice in to move from your apartment or wherever you're moving and you have signed a lease at the new place that you're going to move your car is like you're getting ready and like you're starting to there are like actual real solid plans Mm -hmm. that's when i think that you should tell her because i agree you shouldn't give her so much notice that like if something falls through Mm -hmm. but not like hey by the way i'm leaving tomorrow on a jet plane or in a car yeah, yeah, and also, um, was there someone in your position before you started? Did she mm. train you? Because uh, if she trained you, then it should just be the same for when the next yeah. person yeah. comes in. She should just train the next person. Mm-hmm. And even if not, uh, it's there's only so much you can do. I think mm-hmm. what we're saying of like having giving a, a fair amount of notice, offering to help find a new applicant, train them uh, if possible, all those things, when you put all those things on the table and you offer them and you're like very gracious and you say thank you for the opportunity to work here and all that, if she turns around and then makes that uh, and gets mad at you for leaving, there was nothing you were going to ever be able to do. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how much notice you gave, like she was going to get upset. So, and that's not your responsibility because it's her business and it's not yours. And um, so as long as you have your plan ready to go, then I think, yeah, try not to worry too much about it. And But if you did like sign a contract that said that you would give more mm. notice, then you do need to take that. Yeah, account. yeah, double That's check on way. Read your contracts, people. Read mm-hmm. the fine print. Dot the I's, cross the T's. Terms and conditions <laughs> apply. Hi, Megan. I am 24 years old, and I'm calling about my little sister who is 17 and has been blindly in love for two years with the same wrong guy. So keep in mind that I know that you're an only child, talk about all the time on the podcast. But I I talk to my little sister like she's my best friend. So we have a very open and honest relationship. Um, backtracking, my sister's been dating the same guy since she was 15 and he was 17, which makes her 17 and him 19 now. So they're still babies. Understand that. Babies. Um, <laughs> so when they started dating, my parents didn't have the best opinion of him, and they still don't. They think that he's kind of a punk kid who doesn't really have any goals, and uh, the, the, the Southern saying is he thinks his shit doesn't stink, and I don't think that he's pretentious. I just think that he thinks very highly of what he knows he can do, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, my sister's assured me for two years now that my parents are wrong. I have the wrong opinion of him. And I've met him enough times to go, oh, okay. I, I think he's just a kid. And my, my parents just don't like you neighbors, I'm guessing. Um, but that was, again, in the beginning when they we were actually living in the town where they met. We are all now living two hours away from that town. So they're doing long distance. Uh, but they've been dating for two years. And they've been doing about six months long distance. And I do not see this working out well for her. He decided he didn't want to go to college, which is fine. But he's just comfortable living in that same little town that's two hours away from where we are now. And he's going to stay there and work the same part-time job the rest of his life. And sometimes that works for people. 
but I really don't think that's going to work for my sister. Uh, she's super goal oriented, like wants to save the planet. And I love that about her. And she insists that no matter what, she'll never give up on her dreams for him. But she's also telling me things like, oh, when I graduate, he's going to come out and he's going to live in this town while I go to college. And he's going to get a big job. And I'm like, I, I can only tell her, sweetheart, I don't think that's going to work out so many times before she starts just lying to me or not telling me things, which is what I'm afraid will happen. So what can I do to give her the best advice I can and keep her from being blindsided if the relationship doesn't work out? What can I do with that? Because I don't want her to not trust me and not talk to me because I don't like the kid. But I also don't want her to end up getting hurt because I just kept my opinion to myself. Anyway, thanks a lot. I mean, first things first, I don't think you've kept your opinions to no, yourself. It sounds like she's got an idea that the family's not crazy about him. Yeah. I also, I, here's the thing. Your sister sounds like, minus this dude, she sounds like an awesome kid. Mm-hmm. She sounds like she's got, like, plans for her future. She's got, like, ideas of what she wants to do. She wants to go to college. She's got all these things that she is planning and will not change for his sake and that's the only time that I think you need to worry is if suddenly she was like yeah I'm not going to go to college I'm going to move back to that town we're going to get married and have babies like if that's not that there's anything wrong with that but if it suddenly is changing what she thinks of for her future in order to accommodate him and make him feel more masculine and though he's like the head of the household and though she has to dim herself and her like future plans in order to keep him happy that's when i think you have to say something but right now he seems like as a partner for her it seems to be willing to let her move away and go do these things and have these goals and if she's still pursuing those things i think you know she's got a good head on her shoulders and i think just concentrate your advice on her future and what she wants to do sure she'll bring up the boyfriend and be like oh yeah and then he'll come visit on the weekends when i'm a freshman and you can just nod your head and say yeah sure like Mm -hmm. i'm sure he will and whatever happens happens there's nothing you're going to be able to do to stop her from getting hurt because they're already two years deep into this relationship it will be her first heartbreak Mm -hmm. That's just unless, you know, they he magically steps up and becomes a great guy and then they they get married. I don't know. Like we don't we can't really tell. But most likely based on stats, like they will break up. And whether she's the one who Mm -hmm. decides to end it or he does, it'll still hurt and she'll still be hurt. And I think you're a lovely sister for like caring that much and wanting to stop her from getting hurt by any means necessary. But that's just It's not going to happen. She will get hurt. That's inevitable. Yeah. And I think also think highly enough of your sister that she's not going to that she's not going to like let this guy be the one who like brings her down or changes her dreams or things like that. Compromise her life. Yeah. Because the way that you talk about her and how great she is, if she's that great and she's that smart, smart, like guys don't have like magic dicks like they don't completely <laughs> like oh my god like you like sure smart girls can be and like i i consider myself a somewhat smart person on occasion in certain fields um but i've been with plenty of dumb guys and like i've mm-hmm. like, and it's something that like is it unavoidable also sometimes it's like not that it's like sometimes it's like a conscious decision sometimes it's like there's something that you want to be with someone and you like them even though like on paper or what you see for your what other people see for your future like you're never going to see what her, she sees in him and also like the way you keep referring to him as a kid he is totally still yeah. a kid And the idea that like just because right now he decided not to go to college and he decided to have this job, like it's a little fucked up to say like he's going to have this job for the rest of his life. You don't know that. Like Hmm. this guy can also surprise you, too. But like if you have this like incredibly negative image of him, even if he starts to change and grow and like we know boys do it so much slower than girls. Hmm. And even if he does all of that, if you have this idea of him that he's never going to be able to like get past that negative image you have of him painted. And I mean, I definitely, I've not always liked the people that my friends have dated. Yeah. I was just going to bring that up that Meg and I talk about this a lot, that there have been times where our close friends, which is not the same as siblings, but like still you're really close. And and we're both only children. So we're like, no, you are our siblings. Yes, basically. (laughs) Um, There are times when you don't like those partners, but I've realized that the only time that I can really 
I feel comfortable saying something is if I believe that treatment or uh, the things I don't like about them are directly related to the treatment of mm -hmm. my friend. Um, when it's just a question of like, our personalities don't clash or do clash, or I think like, eh, they're kind of lame and I don't really enjoy their company. That's a personal opinion mm -hmm. and I have to, you can see so much more from the outside of a relationship than you can when you're in it. And I think, you know, to a certain extent, you just have to let your sister get what she needs to out of this relationship. Yeah. And I'm a big proponent in like, if I, my friends, boyfriends, the only service that they provide to my life is, and the only thing that I care about not okay not really the only thing like because yeah i definitely like haven't always liked them but like the thing that i oh, it always boils down to i'm like as long as you make my friend happy mm -hmm. as long as they are happy and as long as your sister is happy your opinions on him because it's not what you see for her or you you're thinking 10 years down the road that's okay and that's fine but also as much as you see if yes this, if this relationship is totally stagnant in like the way that both of their dream like everything happened if this if it stays like this for the rest of for the next 10 years but you have to remember that they are young both of them are going to grow and evolve and their relationship is going to grow and evolve that the idea that like you're so afraid that like in a couple years time these plans that she has like they're not going to happen because of what you're seeing right now give them both a little bit, like cut them both some slack. And I think just being supportive for her, because also, like you said, the more opinion and negative, like feelings that you have for, towards him that you give her, all that's going to do is make her want to prove everybody wrong mm. and is not going to make her be able to feel close and talk to you about it when she does feel shitty. Because that's something that I've learned when I've expressed my feelings about friends, partners, and then they no longer talk to me about them. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay, I cut off that line of communication. Now you don't feel like I'm a safe place. And so when you're going through drama or you're like having a d difficulties, you don't feel like you can come to me because I'm going to make it bigger than it actually is or say i told you so and yeah. that's not what anyone wants to hear so i think you just need to like trust her and i think like like you said like if you start to see that like she's being really unhappy or she's doing things like really out of character she also might like grow and realize that she wants to do something different or anything like that i just not putting her on this pedestal because then there's going to be nobody who you think is like going to be deserving of her when in reality like the ultimate goal is that like she's happy mm -hmm. and as much as we have ideas of who we think are going to make people happy, there are certain, I mean, I definitely even had ideas for myself of what was going to make me incredibly happy in a relationship and like character traits and who that person would be. And um, especially when it's an outside opinion, like you don't really know what it is that is so important to each other. Um, yeah, I've been you in this situation with my younger sister, the same age. She was dating somebody when she was 17 for a couple years. Um, and he was a piece of shit. He was a couple years older. <laughs> he was actually my age and I couldn't stand him. I mm -hmm. didn't like him before they started dating. Like I'd known him for years. And in the beginning, I made it very known how much I did not like him. Um, and it just and so did the rest of our family. And it just pushed her closer to him. Mm -hmm. And then when I kind of pull away and he people eventually do show their true colors. Mm -hmm. um, if if this guy is the same as the way that my sister's ex-boyfriend was, he eventually did show his true colors. And um, when she was done with him, I was the first person that she called. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just let her know that you're there for her, but don't, just from my experience, don't push how much you dislike him too hard because mm -hmm. um, it can just push her away from you and then force her to lean too much on him. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you get trapped and tangled in mm -hmm. that web, which is never fun. But yeah, I mean, you just gotta, yeah, sw bite your teeth. It's, I mean, bite your teeth, mm -hmm. bite your tongue. <laughs> Don't bite, you can, use your teeth to bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten a lot better at biting my tongue about this stuff. Shall we go on to the next? Hey, Megan, I'm 20 years old. I have been listening to your podcast uh, since you first started, um, and I wanted to send in my own because I'm kind of in a bit of a predicament here. So pretty much I have been uh, living with this group of people that are all um, I consider my best friends for just over a year now, and um, everything's been going pretty great in my opinion, um, but one day when uh, no one was home, I went and stupidly read uh, messages off of one of my friend's laptops uh, between her and my other roommate who have 
I discovered has been talking shit about me for months. Um, and I know I can't really confront them because I have to say that I went through her uh, laptop. But I'm kind of wondering how to go about this situation because it's kind of made me like really angry and hold a lot of resentment against them without them even really knowing why and me being able to even explain why. I haven't done it since, but uh, I know it was stupid of me to do, but I'm just kind of wondering uh, what I should do in this situation or just try and forget about it. Uh, I don't know. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. They've pretty much been just talking crap about me, about my uh, relationship that has since ended, but uh, have been talking about um, pretty much everything about me they've been talking shit about. I'm just wondering how to sort of go about this. And they've, they've also been talking uh, crap about my other two roommates as well, so I'm just sort of wondering what I should do. Any help would be great. Anyways, thanks. Love you. Love your podcast. Wow, this is why you sh- roommates suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, roommates can be great. Living I've had, with friends. Yeah, I've had Don't great experiences. Don't live with your best friends. Yeah. But at the same time, I lived with my best friend for two years and I loved it. Aww. But that was because it's not like we, it was perfect, but we like were able to talk through any issues that we had. Um, and that's kind of the key here is that whatever these two girls have um found to take issue with with you they're not bringing it up with you Mm -hmm. and that's the part that's unfair um and also i feel i'm so sorry like what a horrible thing to think that you're getting along with all these people and find out that two of them are shit talking you because they're also probably being nice to your face if you had no idea no but you looked so Mm -hmm. you knew something was up you maybe had some sort of inclination but i think what i think is um you don't have to explicitly say that you think something's the matter but casually maybe in the kitchen when you're crossing paths or something just say hey I was feeling kind of a weird vibe lately just wondering like do you have any issues with me is there something going on like is there something I can be doing better are you bothered that I'm leaving dishes in the sink or something like is there something going on that I don't know about um that or I'm not aware I'm doing and you are bothered by And if their response is to be like, oh, my God, no, what are you talking about? We're fine. Then fuck them. Mm -hmm. They suck. Uh, And if they're not willing to take that opportunity when you're giving it to them to offer criticism to improve, then it's their problem. And what they're doing really is that they're using you and your other roommates as a bonding tool with the two of them. Exactly. Because people actually do bond by shit talking. It's like a weird human thing that we create a like quicker but not as solid, but a quicker bond between two people mm-hmm. by saying negative things about other people. Um, and so clearly that's how they're maintaining their friendship is by shit talking the other people that they're living with. And I think that just shows kind of weak personality uh, traits to yeah. be frank. I mean, I, I fully agree with that because I think like there is something to like and if I if I look at this in terms of like relationships, like when I talk shit on like mods or whatever to my friends, the stuff that I'm usually talking shit on is either a something that like we've had arguments about and we've already discussed or it's something that's like when you're talking shit and you're like, oh, it's so trivial. Like he has this one mm-hmm. shirt that I have sent, hence a sense thrown away because I think he listened to the other episode where I was like, I hate <laughs> this one shirt um, or it's something that is so petty that it doesn't matter. So like, it's more generalized, like just to like, oh, when guys do this thing and then we're girls, yeah. so we get to go, oh, uh, yeah, annoying. But I think like when it comes to like a relationship that involves like living together, like mm. when someone's talking shit about you as opposed to like bringing something up to change, there usually isn't really anything to change because like that's on them. Like if it was something like if it was a constructive thing of being like, oh, she never push, puts puts her dishes away. Those are things that if you read it, you would be like, oh, shit, like I really should. And usually it's going to come from the fact that they've already said something and then you're not cha- like they've already like put out what their issue is and there is no changing. And then they're talking shit. If they're talking shit without having talked to you about it at all. I don't think it's about you. Like you said, Mm -hmm. I think it is a bonding tool between them and the fact that they're talking shit about the other roommate. Like, A, that's just fucking messy. Like, you all live together. Like, if you're friends... This is what would happen if you start talking shit to the... Also, I think this says that those two girls 
don't have a lot of other friends because Mm -hmm. really like I totally get having to let off steam if you're like living in close quarters with a lot of people you want to be able to shit talk sometimes just to get it off your chest but if you can't even call a friend who doesn't live with you like you need to expand your social circle also you're destroying it actively right now yeah I, I just think it's so incredibly immature and dumb and it just shows how shitty of friends that they probably are because also know as much as shit they're talking to each other I guarantee you they're probably talking shit about each other to other people mm. like it's just not a productive environment when you live with people and you're going to do that and it just I think it just shows like complete carelessness of other people's feelings um and as much as like you identify those people as your friends I don't think I they haven't been treating like how people treat you behind your back I think is like the most important thing like it just shows how they are but like but that also that is so often a thing that you cannot measure no you often don't see how people talk about you or treat you behind your back and we assume it's we hope it's good if we don't hear anything yeah there's a level of trust that usually goes into a friendship because you're assuming that they're on the same page with you and they're not treating you poorly behind your back and for that like I really am sorry this must have been such a shock and like it must make you feel so bad that there are these people that you genuinely liked and thought you were doing right by Mm -hmm. who are shit talking you and I just want you to make sure you don't take it personally and realize also those other roommates are being shit talked to don't tell them (laughs) yeah but you know realize that it's not about you it's about those two girls and it's yeah if as long as you're doing everything to be a considerate roommate then just she's yeah. not though she went and looked on their computers but that's i think that has you have to have had like an inclination yeah that something was up and to me that makes it seem like as much this might not have been as out of left field as you thought and this might have been confirming your suspicions that like they weren't that great and that they were being kind of shitty and being kind of cold to you and maybe take that as being like a you know what i cared enough in the moment before it was confirmed to like look because like it was obvious like there was something there that made you want to look and you have that confirmation now and now it can be like you know what i'm not going to put as much time and energy into fostering a friendship and i'm just going to treat them like roommates because that's what they deserve but yeah uh yeah it sucks i'm sorry having like roommates drama is by far the worst Fuck these girls also don't snoop yeah Moral of the story, don't snoop from somebody who snooped all the time. Don't snoop, but it's not good. I don't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> uh, is it time for a break? Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. Get ready to clean out your closet and shop for new spring clothes on Poshmark. Pew, 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 pew. The free app where you can easily sell your items for cash money, y'all. Guys, I'm a huge fan of Poshmark. I mean, first of all, I literally will like scroll all the time, find such cute dresses. If you're a fan of like those little boutiques online that like sell out of clothes incredibly fast and things that you've wanted for a really long time, it's a fantastic place to find them. You can score items from Lululemon, Nike, Louis Vuitton, and more for up to 70% off. There's tons of lightly used or brand new items with tags available for sale. You can shop for your next event, your vacation, or even Mother's Day on Poshmark. Shipping is fast and the app is incredibly easy to use. Listing your Poshmark closet is a breeze. Just snap a few photos of the items you're selling, add the details, and boom! Whenever you make a sale, Poshmark sends you an email with the shipping label and you just print it out and ship it to the lucky buyer. Shopping on Poshmark is amazing because they have tons of cool items and all the brands that you can think of. It's practically like shopping for free with the money that you make on sales. I've said this before, but one of my favorite Soul Cycle hoodies is from that I got from Poshmark. I also got a really cute red J. Crew coat, which it didn't get that cold this winter and I couldn't wear. So maybe I need to like make like a Maybe I need to go to like the Arctic so I can wear it. Very, very cute. I actually have been, uh, I'm like traveling a bunch and I keep like looking to find like new clothes, but you know, that are not, that are new to me. I love things that I don't have to be so like precious with and things that are like gently used a better for the environment in general. Um, but I've been scrolling through, there's this brand called Rat and Boa and they sell out of their dresses so fast and they're always, people always have them listed on Poshmark. And so Maybe I'll just check out and get one. Really, really, really cute. Uh, I'm a big fan. And listeners of Don't Blame Me get $5 off your first purchase. Just enter the invite code BLAME5 when you sign up. That's invite code BLAME5. 
Anyone who's had a migraine knows that they're the absolute worst. Now it's a little easier to treat your migraine from the comfort of your own home thanks to Cove. Cove breaks down everything you need to know about migraines and migraine treatment. Start with a simple consultation by a physician that's licensed to practice medicine in your state. Then, once they determine which prescription is best for you, Cove sends it directly to your door and reaches out in a few weeks to see how you're feeling. All migraine medication prescribed by the doctors at Cove is FDA approved. So... Melissa and I both get terrible migraines. Terrible. It's one of the things we have in common. We have mm-hmm. so many like things that we just like mesh on and migraines <laughs> and is migraines one of them. It. And uh, migraines are, they're terrible. We talk about them all the time of, they just make you just tap out from mm-hmm. life and existence and they're horrible. I would not, I mean, I would wish them upon my worst enemy. I'm not going to lie. Like I definitely would because they're that <laughs> bad and I've got a couple of hardcore enemies, but this has been amazing for both of us yeah the con everything that it goes this is like we know how much i hate calling people how much i hate doing anything that involves having to like leave my house i am so here for being able to do all of this online the process was so incredibly easy Mm -hmm. and it was so interesting to see like you record a video of like you doing these like things yeah and And it was just so fascinating it made me think about like my migraines more Mm -hmm. as opposed to being this like just like blinding pain that happens i'm like oh this is like a neurological thing Mm -hmm. and it's just a interesting but it's also like you're able to get help from a doctor and you don't have to leave your house yeah it was way more in depth than like my actual doctor that Mm -hmm. i've gone to for migraines and this felt like it was way more personalized for exactly the type of migraine that i get yeah because sometimes when some people get nauseous when they get migraines Mm -hmm. some people like there are all these other different things and nobody's prescription or like whatever you're going to get is going to be exactly the same because it is catered for you. So our migraines might not be exactly the same. Right. We both have them, but mm-hmm. they're a little different. They're like snowflakes. Mm-hmm. They're all they're special. All different. And I got, when I got mine, um, it all, it all came in the mail and it's just like, I got nausea medicine with mine and it came in two bottles and it was just easy. Everything about it is just easy. Which I wish more, everything in the medical field I think should be easier. Mm-hmm. And this is something that's so nice that, I have like that list of things that I'm like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And this is one of those things that like I can check this off in sweatpants at my house. And it's something that makes my life just so much more bearable and livable. So if you guys suffer from migraines, the last thing you need is have to wait to see your doctor. With Cove, there is finally a way to get the help you need when you need it. And when you use my special link, you'll get your first month of treatment for free. Go to withcove.com slash blame. That's W-I-T-H-C-O-V-E dot com slash blame with cove.com slash blame own iconic luxury items at unreal values with the real real the leading reseller of authenticated luxury from top designers shop from designers like louis vuitton gucci rolex cartier and hundreds more at up to 90 percent off retail new arrivals come in daily and every single item is authenticated by the real real's team of experts in fact the real real employs over one hundo that is 100 brand authenticators, gemologists, horologists, and art curators from around the globe who inspect thousands of items each day to ensure that every item is 100% authentic. Shop and consign women and men's luxury fashion as well as fine jewelry, watches, art, and home. Shop online or visit one of the original stores in Soho or West Hollywood or their newest location at 870 Madison Avenue in New York. You can also visit one of the luxury consignment offices in Chicago, Dallas, Miami, San Francisco, or Washington, D.C. New in-store customers receive an automatic $25 off at checkout. You guys know I'm a big fan of the real real. Huge fan. I'm actually currently wearing, and I have been every single day, a ring that I got. Did I show you guys this Mm -hmm. one last time? It's It's very cute. So cute. It's so me. I am only going to shop for jewelry on the real real now. I also told Mots because like jewelry is like my number one like gift that I want for my, <laughs> like, to buy myself and from him. And I was showing him and he was like, wow, this is amazing. These are so much more affordable like than any other jeweler because like these are things that are like gently and lightly used and you really, really, really can't tell because th- that's the reason why they have everybody who's like make, looking at them being like, this is good. This quality is great. My purse is from the real real. I literally have been like just harding a bunch of stuff cute, like for love and lemons dresses that I'm like, I need this right for all of those events that I like leave my house for, which apparently are happening more often. So I, it's like my new favorite place to shop. Shop in store, online, or download the app and get 20% off select items with the promo code REAL. That's the realreal.com promo code REAL for 20% off select items. Okay, guys, we're back from our break. What did you do? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, back to the calls. <laughs> Hi, I am 26 years old. I'm from Michigan. 
And I just have a question. So I am from a very large Catholic family, and um, I'm number five, and I went to therapy um, probably a year and a half ago because I was just extremely depressed. I had a lot of anxiety. Um, So I'm number five. I have nine brothers and sisters in number 10. So my youngest sibling is just reaching out to me so hard. There's no way that I can walk away from the conversation without saying you need to talk to a therapist. But my mom is like this terribly old school Catholic woman. So she's like, oh, no, just fulfill some sexist rule and and talk to a priest about it. Um, so basically, I'm telling my youngest sister to go to therapy, but at the same time, my mom is mocking me to other people who I don't speak to, I have, like, no relationship with about therapy in front of my younger sister. So she's not willing to approach my mom about going to therapy but at the same time, she's just, she's always reaching out to me, talking about how depressed she is and anxious she is. And I, I just don't know how to help because I've also talked to my mom about her going to therapy. And she just, I guess, essentially mocks me to my face. Like, it's not, I, no, nobody takes me seriously because I'm not as Catholic as everybody else. So I just, I'm not sure how to help my sister because I would just like claim her as my own child and have her go on my insurance, but I, my insurance is terrible. So I can't get her a therapist without having to pay $200 a visit. And I just don't have that kind of money. You, I really like her voice and also you have yeah. the nicest <laughs> sister. Yeah. Like this is so sweet and so nice. Um, And this is just... There's nothing more upsetting to me than parents letting down their kids. Mm -hmm. Like that is just so shitty. And you can't even work their own therapy if they're (laughs) anti-therapy. Yeah. Oh, God. This is frustrating. I mean, I I have a lot of feelings about uh, religion. I didn't personally grow up going to church or having uh, any close uh, relationship with God or anything like that. Um, So... But I also know some people who have had positive uh, experiences in church. Not a lot of them, but like some (laughs) people. And so I think within the community, maybe if you've got like a if like she's got a good relationship with that priest, maybe like it's worth going to a couple meetings just so that mom can see that she's tried it. And then even maybe the priest, if they're like progressive, they can Mm -hmm. sort of suggest to mom like a professional would be a great person for your daughter to see and then having it come from someone who's not you even though she should trust you because you sound like a great person who's really learned a lot and has a lot of like insight into this i don't know the fact that she's mocking you is just miserable to me i hate that it's that like that to me like that is just so shitty and sad and also shows great like how great and strong that you are because i'm sure that like i mean as somebody who goes to therapy now twice a week like it's not like you don't immediately decide that you're going to go it's kind of like a slow like i'm gonna go and the fact that i'm sure that she has been vocal in a negative way about therapy and mental health for your childhood growing up and that you have grown up and been able to then see that that's not right and then you're going to see a therapist I think if that's any uh, any consolation in yours that your sister is coming from a very similar environment that she doesn't that as much as like she's young and impressionable and her mom can be is not being supportive. That doesn't mean that for the rest of her life that she's going to believe those things and not validate her feelings because she is going to you. She's going to you yeah. and she knows You're a that great guiding light for her. She can and like, that you've turned not turned your back on the church community or anything like that, but that you have recognized that like mental health is something that needs to be prioritized and dealt with with a with professional a, yeah, medical professional. There's a reason why that. that that's a thing. And the fact that she's going to you, I think, is um I, I'm sh- I know it's probably a really it feels like weighty on you to kind of de- when you're when you're dealing with your own struggles with mental health and then other people want to like lean on you or rely on you. It can be really hard because 
And you can feel helpless because you have yeah. a lack of resources in order to help. Her. Yeah, because you have some you have someone that helps you. And so then and helping other people can feel um, like a lot, especially because you might not have all the answers, which I think or the money to help. Either. Yeah, which I think is is totally fine. I think um, the keeping the line of communication with her open and just like having conversations. I think if that means like sharing any sort of like uh, like articles or resources that you find um, or that you read that have helped you or any sort of like books or anything like that, like giving her content that she can whether it's like or a library card that she can read certain things with that um, and do doing those things. I think I don't know if she goes to like if she goes to like a private Catholic school, it might be hard. But if she goes to a school where they have a counselor who, um, you know, <laughs> believes in mental health <laughs> and not like and, you know, like homosexuality isn't like the whole like pray your sadness and yeah. the gay away. Um, if there is a resource at school, you can always go to her school with her like after mm -hmm. school and be like had like to, or even just talk to a counselor because um, you are over 18 and like you are a, like by, like a family member list um and talk to a counselor and you can even if you're concerned about her like if there's something happening at school um not that i'm saying like rat it out or whatever but like if you can you can have somebody who can be looking out for her at school um and i think a guidance counselor i had the first time i ever was told that i was had anxiety was from my college or my high school we had like a college guidance counselor at my high school who like helped you get into college. She was the first person who told me that I had anxiety and she just said it as this like very blase sort of thing. Um, where I was like, thought I was dying cause I came into her office and I just thought I was dying because I like couldn't breathe and I was crying and I was like hysterical. And, um, it was literally over the fact that I didn't have any friends in my chemistry class. And I was like, I know it's stupid. I know it's stupid. And I was like losing my mind. And I was like, I just can't do it. If I can't do it, I don't know anybody. Like, I feel like a fucking idiot. And I was losing my mind. She was like, you're, ain't, you've got anxiety and you're very anxious about that. And that's a completely valid thing. And we're going to switch your schedule and we're not going to put you in this class because you don't have any friends in this class. And that's not this, this is not how you can take this class. You can't take this class if you feel like this. And it wasn't like a buck up, feel better sort of thing. And it was, yeah, it was the first time an adult in my life had like seen me panic and seen me like almost have a full blown anxiety attack and told me like, we're going to figure this out. Like, this is fine. We're going to solve this. And it was something that was to be solved. And I wasn't something to be solved. Like it was a problem that made me feel a certain way. And it wasn't just don't feel that way. Like we're going to go about this. So I think like, and her, her, she, her training specialty was like helping you get into college. <laughs> so I think like, if you can talk to somebody at her school, that would be great. There are more like free, cheaper therapy. Um, yeah. We always have them linked mm -hmm. in the show notes for I think every single episode. Yeah. Um, I was also going to say that a lot of therapists have a sliding scale for payment. Yeah, yeah. That if you get in touch and you explain the situation and the fact that like financially it's just not feasible to pay their normal fee, they can offer you different rates mm -hmm. and they do that on purpose. So then like they want to be able to help people. That's their whole job. So yeah. even if you got in touch with your old therapist and said like, hey, I want to get my sister into therapy, either do you or do you know any of your peers who have sliding scale fees or could do like a small amount of time for free so that my mom can see like that they're, it's actually helpful and then like we can get it through insurance, whatever the case may be. Reach out to anyone you think can help you um, because it shouldn't just be on your shoulders. And I can totally understand how heavy that must weigh on you to know that like your sister is reaching out to you and you alone. And like the fear, I think that's always a fear that you have when like you've got a friend or family member who's reaching out to you about their mental health. You worry constantly. Like anytime you're not in touch, you're like, I wonder how they're doing. Are they worse? Are they better? Like, what if I don't call them every 10 minutes and something happens in that time? Like, I want to make sure that I'm around all the time to help them. And that's so much stress to be on you and like at 26 and mm -hmm. also dealing with your own mental health stuff like you should have other people by your side to help you and really it should be your mom and I'm really sorry that she doesn't seem to take you seriously or believe you um, but if you can find other people in the community who your mom trusts that are maybe more open to the idea of mental health um work and like either yeah get your sister to tell you if there are certain teachers that she really likes who will like who listen and understand like even if it's not even guidance like her math teacher maybe yeah. even if they are just really receptive to the idea of talking about mental health if you can get in touch with that teacher and get notes home or talk to anyone else that your mom might 
like respect their opinion. Um, I think that's really going to be the key because a lot of this too is just your mom's having weird shame about this. So she hates the idea that like her kids aren't perfect. And like if she doesn't believe that mental health is a, a problem, something that can happen and then can be fixed, like she is just trying to hide it. She doesn't want to think about it too much. Um, and that it's just not fair because it's putting you and your siblings in danger. And also if it's just you and your sister, I feel like maybe some of your other siblings have mm -hmm. had issues too and they just haven't spoken about them. They've been too ashamed. And the fact that you have really been forward about it and enough that your sister knows that you are someone who's safe to talk to is really great and really brave of you. So um, yeah. I wish you luck. Yeah. Um, we have a couple apps that sponsor this show, um, BetterHelp and uh, Talkspace, mm -hmm. that you can, um, I don't know if she has a phone or even if she uses iPad your phone touch. or iPad or iPad whatever. Touch. No, <laughs> iPod Touch. iPod Touch. iPod Touch. Um, but maybe you could download those apps for her. Um, and I think they're, they're, they are a lot cheaper than therapy. Mm -hmm. um, Talkspace also has an article on their website called Reconciling Religion and Therapy, Why You Can Talk to God and a Therapist. Mm. And so this might be something that, I'll put it in the show notes, this might be something that you can share with your mom. One thing that they do, um, it's a very long article, but one thing that they do um, um, uh, recommend is find a therapist who specializes in seeing religious clients. Mm. So that could help as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. And I would also say, I'm sure you've probably already done this, but on the off chance that you haven't, ask your therapist like if she has any like at least like anything that um, even if it's just like a couple things that you're like when my sister says something to me like I want I want not that I want to make sure I'm saying the right thing because there is no right answers and like your therapist obviously can't therapize your sister through you, but something that um, can help. Uh, yeah, help help your sister keep the conversation open yeah, that and give doesn't, you some confidence that you know you're doing the right thing yeah, by her. And doesn't make you feel as my always my therapist always says, like you never want to feel too exposed when you're dealing with therapy and you're going through like mental health struggles and everything like that. Helping other people and like sharing your own experiences is great, but it's when you have to do it in a way that doesn't leave you to feel so exposed and like triggered or anything like that. So a way that your therapist who knows your history and everything like that, be like, is there something that I can say to my sister or should say to my sister? Sister, um, or when she asks me something like this, what's something that I can say or do for her that's not going to put me in a really vulnerable and like worse mental state, but that will not shut her down. Yeah. Either. And still keep that line, like keep that communication with you guys there um, in a way that makes the re yeah, makes it the reason why that she keeps coming back to you. And I also think as much as your mom is like being super cold about this, I think in general, I mean, religion I think honestly, religion aside too, I think people who have really, really, really strong feelings, um, anti mental health, um, like the existence of mental health are usually people who have been silenced by other people in their feelings. Mm -hmm. And that is like a very repressed thing. Um, and also a huge thing with like a lot of people who are older and like adults and things like that, who they never got help with therapy and things like that. And so there's a little bit of resentment of people who it's like, no, I turned out fine. It's like, but if you actually look at the whole history of this, right? but did you turn out like, is there, could this have been, could your life have improved? Could your self-esteem have improved? Like your coping mechanisms, your relationship with yourself and other people, could it have improved if you had these resources? And is the reason why you're kind of anti this is because you feel like it's an unfair advantage, um, which is a fucked up thing, especially when it comes from a parent, because you want your parents to want what's best for you. Um, but I think like you have done a great job at um, tuning her like ridiculousness out with all of that and still getting help and doing better because of it. Um, and I think if your mom's not educated on um, depression and anxiety and suicide and these th they, these very, very real consequences of mental health being untreated, um, I think a lot of the time, and I also don't want you to do anything though that, that like, <sighs> at least like for me, I would have a hard time trying to convince somebody because I am so personally invested and it mm -hmm. is your mom and you don't want her to say something that you, when she says something negative, you're like, well, you're talking about me. Um, and that can be like really like hurtful. Um, but, uh, I think a lot of the time people kind of rely on, uh, 
uh, no offense again it's a lot of the times in religion like on the people it's like well you know what like he prayed the gay away and he's no longer gay and it's these like these like she said he said kind of stories when it's like let's look at the statistical facts of what happens when mental health is untreated like let's take religion out of the picture and also what's the worst thing that could happen if your daughter's incredibly depressed and she's feeling really terrible the worst thing that could happen by going to therapy is she feels better like it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that she's not gonna and i think like suggesting like there are really like let's go like we she can go to a therapist who like believes in all of this stuff but like on the off chance that like no matter how great her relationship with god is and how much she prays like she still feels really depressed like your child's happiness should be your number and like your child's mental well-being should be your number one priority um and it sucks sometimes when people's um pride and their own like small-minded beliefs get in the way but mm -hmm. you're obviously doing a really great job a in therapy with yourself because like this is like that's a very strong thing to do yeah, when you still have you a to. relationship with your family but yeah. you've also separated yourself enough to for your own yeah like and self. from the people that you said that you don't have relationships with in your family who hmm. like i think that's also a really strong thing and that you're a fucking amazing great sister yeah and i grew up in church and i had a good experience and stuff and i still went to therapy and i'm yeah. great mm. She's, <laughs> she is great she's thriving <laughs> that's not even sarcastic i'm just jealous <laughs> <laughs> Should we go on to the next? Hey, Megan. I Hi. am 25 and from Utah. I'm going to try and be concise Mormon. because I've tried to record this one and it cut me off. So uh, I am dating this guy. We were friends for around a year and a half. And um, anyway, just became official probably around three months ago um, and have been exclusive for that amount of time. I really like him. Fun. He's great. Makes Fun. me laugh. Um, however, I find myself really frustrated with, with the relationship sometimes because I feel like I have to be fairly assertive when it comes to my needs. Um, like if something bothers me, I have to really bring it up and make a point of it um, in order for him to be considerate of me. Is that weird? So like, in private, when we're one-on-one, -on -one, he's awesome. But when it comes to public events that I'm going out to do or his friends, I can kind of be pushed to the wayside. Uh, for example, he hosted a birthday party for one of his friends last week at his place and didn't invite me. Or we were on a date oh, he's got a, a couple of weeks ago and he ditched me in the middle of it um, to go join a game night last minute. Granted, it's not something we had planned before that this was date night. We were just hanging out on a date. Um, or, like, I invited him to this concert, and um, he said he couldn't go because of funds. And then the next week, uh, spent $500 on a poster that he really wanted. Oh, um, what? Which was super lame and I called it him out be, for that and he apologized like that. <laughs> and that's what I struggle with is that if I bring something to his attention and I'm like hey that really hurt my feelings well, he's really good about fixing that specific circumstance and apologizing and moving on um, but I do feel like I have to keep doing that and I don't want to be a warden I want to be a girlfriend and I don't expect my mind to be read. Like, I'm vocal. Mm. But at the same time, maybe it's just a compatibility issue if I have to keep bringing these things up. Um, or do you think I'm blowing it out of the water? I could use another uh, voice or two on this. I yeah. don't know if you're his girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know if you're his girlfriend. And also, I, he's not a man or a boy. He is a man child. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know a man child who might not officially, might not be as exclusively dating you as you think that you are. I mean, that's, that's the most extreme uh, possibility here is that there's, uh, that you are the side chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, or um, that you're all side, he doesn't have a main mm -hmm. hoe and you're yeah. all side hoes. I think, what you were right at the beginning of the call, I did think that you were the one overreacting when you said like, I need to bring up when I'm bothered by something in order for him to know. Cause I think that's important in a relationship. I don't think you can expect people to read your mind. I think you have to vocalize when you're bothered by something and then like you guys can work it out because I, I live by the philosophy that no one does things um, to be purposefully malicious. I don't think that we 
for the most part, set out to hurt our partners by doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's usually just that we're not thinking. But then when you continue to explain the circumstances, like he, he's the one in the wrong here. Um, he's doing a lot of really inconsiderate things. And then kind of, in my mind, I would assume you're playing dumb by saying like, oh, I had no idea that would bother you, babe. Because like, those are outrageous things I mean, to do. he's a date in the Man middle. child. That's but he ridiculous. also went, threw a party and didn't yeah. invite her. Okay, <laughs> like what he, excuse do you have? Like, oh, sorry. I mean, I know you know them, but like you don't know them as well as I do, I guess. Yeah, like, and, what they've been, the and they were friends for a year and yeah. a half before yeah. they no started dating. There's no way she didn't know those guys at, at We got to break it down, though. First of all, I think that like, just like you said in general, if something upsets you, you have to tell somebody. Nobody is going to be your mind reader. There are some things that Mott's have done where he was like, oh, wow, really? And I'm like, a fucking course that pissed me off. Like, are you a goddamn yeah. idiot? Like, there are some times where just like, your you're like wavelengths are completely crossed. And the idea that somebody would not know that that would like upset you or offend you or hurt you, like you have to say it. And the, the thing that matters though from that is even if he has these really great genuine apologies, so are the things that are happening because you've only been dating for three months. Mm. So let's talk about, so th in that way. So these things, um, it, it's it's the mistakes that happen again after you've already brought it up. So like there are th things like, uh, like I, Mott's used to, I used to, I don't love going out, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, and I like, but I, he knows that about me. So he wouldn't ask me to go out with his friends, but then I would get offended that he wouldn't ask me to go out with his friends. And so when I brought that up, if the next time he didn't invite me and I found out that they all hung out and I wasn't invited, it'd be like, okay, we've already talked about this. But if it's new things that they're different things that like, he's not understanding like, oh, well, no, I learned my lesson here and I now know that this upset you and this made you feel a certain type of way, which I never want you to feel, so I'm not gonna do that again. Are these things isolated incidents or are the same things happening over and over again? Like, yeah. when you, like the examples that you gave, like, okay, so he had a party, th threw a party for his friend and didn't invite you. Okay, so like they're, sure, the excuses can be terrible, but like- Somehow he just made that absolutely idiotic mistake or, genuinely was dumb yeah. was. or it was just like all guys it was and, all guys yeah. or it was like somebody it was like one of the guy friends they like all a group of friends who always used to hang out yeah. together exclusively that group or they okay. planned for something else like it was one of those like last minute things that like has happened like i've had that when like people have had like birthday things or friend things where it's like oh no i was just hanging out with this one person then someone else found out that it was someone's birth that like was it something that was kind of like oh they were on a text thread and it got came together that night like there are like certain things so like, I don't want to make excuses for him. But the same thing when you're like leaving a date, you're like, we didn't say that it was date night. Like, again, mm -hmm. Mats and I have been in this position where we've been hanging out. And then he's like, oh, my friends text me on do something. And I'm like, oh, I thought we were like had the, a plan. And in my head, I'm like, well, I sat at home all day in my sweatpants and I was excited for you to come home because I thought we had. But like if you don't communicate what you're like, what you're doing and what your intent for, like what the night you're going to do and have all of that stuff out, like yes, you were hanging out, but like at the same time, if you guys were also friends beforehand, it is a hard transition to go yeah. from friends to dating. This could be just growing pains, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. it's the stuff that can sometimes go along with like, you're hanging out with one friend, you're like, oh, cool, I'm like, we're gonna all go to the game night thing, like super fun sort of thing. And you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to bring these things up in the moment, mm -hmm. not the day after. If you, mm. you have to bring it up in the moment because you're both fresh in it. It's if, if it's something that he says, it's not going to be like misconstrued and you're not going to think that he said something different and he's not going to be like, no, I didn't say that. And you're like, okay, well, if you said it 10 seconds ago, it's much easier for me to say what you said because you just said it. You have to bring it up in the moment um, because then if you stew on it, he can't fix, like he can just say he won't do it again, but he can't fix how you're feeling in that current moment. And it just as somebody who stews on those feelings, like it just feels shittier and shittier and shittier. And it can feel really personal when it's not necessarily intended to be personal. Um, but at the same time, my mind does automatically go to the fact that I don't know how d much of the dating exclusively you guys are doing. Yeah. <laughs> he sounds like, he sounds like he can, he either sounds like a complete idiot man child, which I'm, yeah, like has he had never had a relationship before you or something? Like doesn't understand how it works. Does this sound that different? Does this sound like so different than things that could have happened to people we know though? Because that's the thing that I'm like, I could hear my friends going on dates with guys or like dating guys who do this, and I'd be like, fucking man child. Like, yeah, yeah. But, when when she said he ditched her during a date, I was thinking like they were at dinner yeah. and he just left. But if they were just at home watching TV. 
And you were like, and, oh, hmm. sure. Okay, yeah, Because you did fine. say, like, it was just us uh, hanging. Yeah. 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 And especially when you go from friends, like, it, mm-hmm. it, it is a much more lax relationship. And then you get into a relationship and it's like, oh, wait, because Mats, that's Mats and I were friends mm-hmm. first. And it became like, a, oh, wait, no, we have to, like, plan to, like, go on dates and, like, do these things. And we can't just keep the same friendship that we've had yeah. going and, like, st- like, just have sex and have that be the only different thing. Which, like, to be honest, sometimes we're like, let's not date. Let's just, like, be together and this will be, this is easy, too. But like you have to express what you need in a relationship and nobody's ever going to be psychic. It's going to be a learning curve. And I would say three months in is you're still really, really learning each other. And if he keeps making if it if you keep being put into the same situations and he keeps doing the same thing over and over again, that's when I think whether he's an idiot for malicious reasons or he's just a fucking idiot, it's not worth your time. But I think like if you really care about him and he is making a conscious effort to like really change and you can see that yeah. and it's not just like a great apology. It's like the yeah, next time something just... else comes up, you're like, oh no, this like this could have been an opportunity for him to do that same thing again. And he doesn't. He does the opposite thing. Um, then I think it's something that you just learn through. Um, yeah. And the thing with the <sighs> concert and him buying the poster. the poster. I feel like it was probably like a concert he didn't want to go to. Yeah. What and is a $500 poster? I don't know, but don't maybe even, he's yeah. been saving up for it. Yeah. And that's why but he yeah. had the money for it because he wanted poster. That's what? a man-child move, though. I have so many friends who like them and their... I, they're not together anymore, so whatever. But I had a friend who her and her ex, like he was very much like frugal as fuck couldn't spend any money on like going out to dinner on dates with her and like doing anything like or them, vacations together or he was anything, like no i don't have but the money but was spending thousands of dollars on like bro trips and like bros going out like rounds of beer on me and she was just like what the fuck and like yeah. it's, it's just priority it is and it's it's yeah. an immaturity thing especially when it comes with like guys who are younger like they don't think of they're not thinking of these things as being like, okay, this well, not is even my pot that of young, money. really. Let's I mean, be real. That's true. I mean, yeah, I but think, like when you think of your pot of money as like a guy, it's like, well, no, like I have like my going out bro money, but like I don't have just like a bunch of money like lying around to like yeah. go to, go to, to a, a, concert a concert I don't want to go to. He, does, he doesn't want to go to and it's just a concert. The poster's going to last him for a while. Yeah. And, and it's but, clearly of something he likes yeah. if it was $500. I, I also think like when it comes to like spending things, I don't think that you should have to spend a ton of money um, being in a relationship. I think like that idea and that aspect, like what on either side, whether it's like your significant other wants you to come along to all these things that you can't afford, or you want your significant other to come with you to things that they don't necessarily really like. Like when Mots and I want to go do something, if it's a concert that he really likes and I'm like, I don't know, he's probably going to buy my ticket. Hmm. <laughs> if like, I really, mm-hmm. I really want to go to Casey Musgraves. I'm not going to ma- make him pay 250 bucks to go see Casey Musgraves. And he's like, that's the country girl who sings a song about following your arrow. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to make you spend 250 bucks because that money to you like I don't I wouldn't want to fucking I don't want to spend 250 bucks to go see a fucking Clippers game like Mm -hmm. no offense but I think like there are other certain things too like you can be excited to share your relationship with somebody but I wouldn't take things like that necessarily super personally um unless it's something that it's like oh it's a it's a family event or a birthday or something like it's my birthday and I really want to go to something this and he's like nah I want to spend that money on me but if it's something like Tr- not I don't want to say the concert's trivial, but something that like it's he didn't realize maybe how much want. it mattered. Or- yeah, and did you express how much those things matter to you? And also, when you prioritize things, this is the big thing that I have with relationships. People are like, if there if there's something that's really important for you for someone to be at or someone to like participate in with you, you that can't be buy. everything. Yeah, and it, you should do that thing. Should, yeah, and that's where you yeah. guys need to like match up at. And I think yeah, there's right now you just kind of have to evaluate why he is so not considerate of you is it because he's just not used to it yet he's not used to having someone else around to consider and to try to make happy by participating in the things that they like doing or is it really just because to him a girlfriend is someone who is available who can cook and clean and be there to have sex with at Mm -hmm. night and he gets to go have his own life still like because there are unfortunately you know the society we that is sort of the way a lot of men can be and um i personally get super turned off by the idea of having to train a man to like be a nice person mm-hmm. um but like if maybe it's just a question of him learning right now or does he not actually want to learn and accommodate because the friend that we were just talking about who's no longer with that partner i think that's what their relationship really came down to is that he did not want to 
compromise or change mm-hmm. or do anything for her. He simply wanted her to fit the mold. Yeah, to fit yeah. into his life. And he never considered what it would be for him to fit into hers. Um, and so that, I guess, is just now the question that you have to ask yourself is, is this relationship just in its early stages and we have to figure out how to grow together in order to make a good partnership? Or like, am I just the girlfriend because out of convenience, he liked being my friend and he thought like, oh, she's cool and chill. And like, I still get to live my own life. And wait, hold on. I get to have sex with her now. (laughs) This is sick. Like, is that his thought process? I think it's just about figuring out what that is and also, you know, what you need. Because mm-hmm. that's that's the important thing. Like you were saying, prioritizing yeah. what you need in the relationship in order to be happy. And don't be afraid to ask for what you need. As somebody mm-hmm. who my therapist is giving me the homework of telling me I have to figure out what I need in all the relationships in my life. And I'm like, I have no fucking idea. I can just do everything <laughs> myself. And she's like, well, this is the issue and this is why we're here. Um, but I don't, the idea when you're saying like, I, I want to be a girlfriend, I don't want to be a warden. I, this, like the nagging girlfriend, like nagging wife, that Uh fucking, yeah, just try, like get rid of that because no matter who you date for the rest of your life, there are going to be things that you're going to ask from them that you need from them. And a perfect relationship isn't somebody that you're not going to have to do that for. Yeah, but it should be two people who can ask for and stuff receive. from each other and, yeah, yeah. And, like, and, and make and, compromises and in that. order to both grow and be better human beings yeah. not a better wife or husband no. not fitting into stereotypes but just being better people for one another like with my parents like my mom was more of a breadwinner than my dad for like certain years of their careers and that meant that my dad would pick up slack and do some things that were like normally more of a female role in the house and so it doesn't have to necessarily be that you just become more of like a female stereotypical partner. Yeah. It's just about being better partners for each other. Yeah, and 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 being able to, I always think it's like, it's just not hurting each other un- unintentionally. Cause like, like you mm-hmm. said at the very beginning, like no one, I don't, unless you're like a sociopath, I don't think you go out to like purposefully hurt someone. And I think so much of communication in a relationship and what you're asking for is, this is what this makes me feel. Mm-hmm. I know that's not your intention, but this is how it makes me feel. And usually it's like, oh wow, yeah, that was not my intention. And also I like, I had no idea. It's and so it's my easy last priority for me to, change to hurt that. you. Like, it's yeah. not something that's hard to change. Um, yeah, I also don't wanna, I don't wanna, I, hopefully we didn't come across too harsh, but I also just, yeah, I'm like yeah. really here for like tearing down the ideas that like movies have made about like relationships because relationships are really hard um, and asking for stuff is hard. Uh, but I think we should all, I don't know, I, I think we should trust the people that or trust ourselves and our own taste in people, especially someone you've been friends with and you're in a relationship with, like know that like you probably saw something really good in him and give him the opportunity um, and the time to show you that he is a stand up guy and he can be uh considerate and his being inconsiderate is him just like being a fucking doofus yeah but also don't stick around if the only thing he's delivering are words and not actions and if it keeps happening again and again because that's someone who's just regurgitating what you want to hear and isn't actually acting on it Mm -hmm. but yeah Woo. okay wow this is time for I would just have like a split screen where it's like me looking at you. Being like, this is <laughs> What's the time. It time for? Like, this is time for don't blame them. And this is when you guys, I'm so the excited. listeners, you guys call in and you give your own advice on uh, previous calls and episodes. Yeah. Because you guys have opinions. <laughs> you have more life experience. You've all, you, all of you, we have, I've said this before, they, so many threesomes. All y'all bitches have had so many fucking <laughs> I'm threesomes. I'm mad because I was not included in these conversations. You but guys you didn't have a threesome? Me no, oh. I mean, the conversations they were having, they were sending you messages. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll, that's a threesome. You yeah. should include me in it. 100%. <laughs> if you're going to talk about your threesomes with me, you have to include Melissa. <laughs> Just mm. send it on the podcast one. Yeah. You can tell who's responding based on how it's spelled. <laughs> I, I usually put my initials oh. up. Okay. so I, people know m no yeah. all my initials <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. uh, all right so this is from um the episode with alexi wasser um there is a caller the original caller she was a team mom mm-hmm. and uh she was debating if she should stay with her boyfriend that mm-hmm. really wasn't contributing anything yeah. to mm-hmm their lives yeah well she hasn't had a baby yet no she hasn't whoa and he already wasn't contributing yeah. they they were like, like, she didn't really <laughs> think she really didn't want to be with him i think they were it was kind just, of like a yasmin they were mm. kind of already like broken up mm. all right here's the color that's sharing similar experience hi megan i was just listening to that episode with alexi and um a caller 
called in. She's going to be a teen mom, and um, I actually have some advice for her. I, my mom, actually, I'm not a teen mom. I'm actually not even a teen anymore, but my mom had me really young, and I um, recall, I actually do have some memories of my biological dad being somewhat involved during the first few years of my life, but from what I've gathered, he's sort of like a deadbeat guy, and him and my mom weren't together, and she wanted to raise me on her own. So, yeah, I was raised by a single mom, and honestly, it was amazing. I really appreciate your advice um, for this caller and other callers, because I know there have been a few um, parents who have called in saying that they were concerned about raising their child and not having both parents be involved. But honestly, if you have one stellar parent, I felt like that was really all I needed. Um, I don't think it impacted my life in a negative way at all. I think what would have impacted my life negatively was if I had a shitty dad. (laughs) Um, And honestly, I felt my whole life like all I really needed was my mom. It was me and her. Um, I had other family members that were super involved and I totally agree with you about the fact that it's not really your parents who raise you, like the people who like the sperm and the egg. It's really not about that. It's about the people who actually put in the time and effort and love into being a part of your life. And like I said, all I ever needed was my mom. And I really think that I'm just forever grateful that my mom chose to do this all on her own and didn't want to have someone who was sort of toxic be a part of my life. So, yep, that's my advice is just to really like to that mom and any other moms or dads, I guess, out there. um, If you're worried about including someone else, like having the other parent be involved just for the sake of your child having two parents, I don't really think that's necessary. I think it's all about just providing a really loving environment for your child. Thank you. Love you. Love Melissa. Love the podcast. Bye. Oh my God. That almost made me cry. That's that so, so sweet. fucking yeah, sweet. sweet. Oh my God. Can we send this clip to your mom? <laughs> <laughs> so For yeah. Mother's Day. Oh, it's after Mother's Day. Oh, no. yeah. Never mind. But it's just so sweet. <laughs> that just makes me so happy. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that like that advice that I don't have, I didn't come from like a single parent household, but I'm glad that that's like, I don't know, like that's like, what I would assume. Um, yeah. And yeah, no, that was really nice. And I, I, I know a lot of people who were raised by single parents and I think often it was trying to either keep in touch or get in touch with that uh, parent who wasn't around was the most harmful part of their mm-hmm. childhoods. And it was only when they stopped trying to have that person in their lives that they realized they didn't even need them. Um, and yeah, and I think you bring up a good point that it doesn't have to be, it's the most crucial thing is not having two parents around. It's about having people who care about the child Mm -hmm. in the child's life. And that is the most important part. And to the original caller, you know, I hope you're, uh, you're feeling a little bit more confident with your choices and, and what you're going to do in the future. And I hope you have family and friends around who will support you and help you because you don't need this dude who is not even <laughs> pulling his weight before no. there's a baby. That's yeah. crazy. And he can't pull his weight. He probably weighs like 85 pounds. Very small. <laughs> small, small, small team boy. Team boys are very small. Um, but yeah, that makes me that makes me happy. And I'm so happy that you and your own have such a great relationship because yeah, that mm-hmm. it, it is, it's so very true in the sense that like the again like you said like knowing friends who came from like single family households when we when the the kids like my peers got old enough to be like you know what i don't want to do the reaching out so much it was like oh i'm not disappointed when i'm like Mm -hmm. but if it's like i'm reaching out because i think that i'm supposed to have this figure and then someone's letting me down but it's like you don't that figure doesn't need to be that person and i don't know like needing and or not i don't want to say needing but like trying to chase someone down to fulfill a role without them doing it on like their own accord, that doesn't always feel as good. Like it feels like more of an obligation unless of somebody um, who just wants to be there. Like Yasmin Switzer's boyfriend, Logan. <laughs> Logan? 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. Logan. Yeah. Wow, we know way too many Logans. Um, uh, we are also putting a stop on people like Megan and Melissa mm-hmm. because there's mm. just too fucking many of us. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's confusing as hell. Um, but yeah, just like that, like when someone like wants, like he's not even Layla's dad. Guys, you gotta watch her. <laughs> She's amazing. I'm obsessed uh, with her. Okay, well that's it for our episode. Oh my Aww. god. Are you sure you guys don't? We can just do another one. Just right? back, to, <laughs> back to back to back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> Um, well, I was going to tell everybody where they can find you. I could also probably just list off all of your socials. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, are you Ace and C Paul on Twitter or just Ace and Paul? No, uh, no, just my name on oh, Twitter, Twitter and, and, and Instagram. Instagram. Um, if her. you can't spell it, sorry. I mean, I could do it. Uh, A-I-S-L-I-N-N. It's Paul also in the P-O-L. notes. Yeah. And That's if you're it. watching on YouTube, it'll be right there in the title. It's right there. Cool. Aislinn Paul. Maybe for this picture, I'll just Photoshop for the thumbnail. I'll just Photoshop a picture of me when I was really young when people told me that I was Claire <laughs> from Degrassi. And yeah. uh, we'll do that side by side. Um, well, if you want to follow Melissa and I, our socials are always listed down below. The podcast, Don't Blam Meme Pod. Um, if you are listening to this and you want to watch the video version, um, you can watch on YouTube. Um, and if you are watching on YouTube and uh, you want to um, listen again in your car, because that's where all y'alls or on the bike a treadmill um walking what y'all are the things you do? call in the car all y'all but, but <laughs> you, you do stop use a turn it. signal yeah. which you is great but you need to that. stop doing it it is not safe yeah you can and it, we can't hear you that well <laughs> and if you get pulled over let's talk if you get pulled yeah. over and the cop is like i'm sorry were you distracted and you're like i'm leaving a voicemail for a podcast <laughs> sure it might not technically be illegal because it is hands-free but it is considered distracted driving yeah. and i don't like as much as don't blame me like hold this against like you guys getting mad at us i don't know if that works for the police right <laughs> so do us a solid and pull your car over pull over turn the car off turn and off. then make the call yeah mm-hmm. yeah the turn signal always gets me mm-hmm. and it's like uh and i'm like you're making a left aren't you <laughs> yeah you're making a left uh-huh. you're pausing you're trying to figure out what to say and you're like oh oh okay we're good now um well guys uh that's it if you want to be on an upcoming episode give us a call and leave us a voicemail at 310-694-0976 and if you're an international listener, a Canadians and other places, <laughs> I'm just doing it for you. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, we do love Canadians here. Um, you can send us an audio message at meganpodcast at gmail.com. And then we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. <laughs>